What's happening everybody, my name is Mark and welcome back to the channel and in this video we are going to be talking about whether the Canon 60 is still worth it in 2023. According to Wikipedia, the EOS 6D was publicly announced on the 17th of September 2012. So with all the cameras that are released every year, it's hard to think that the Canon 60 is still a relevant camera in 2023. So let's kick this video off by talking about some pros that I have listed down with the help of my friends regarding the Canon 60. So first and foremost, the first pro of this camera is that this is a full frame 20.2 megapixel camera. What does full frame mean? So if you are used to using some crop sensor cameras like the Canon 200D, uh, M50, those are crop sensor cameras. So this right here is a full frame camera, which means if you take something like the Nifty 50, which is one of the most popular lenses out there, you do get 50 millimeters, which means what you put here will be the focal length that you get. If you put 50 millimeters, you will get 50 millimeters. And it's not like those crop sensor cameras where in whatever lens you put on it, you have to multiply it by 1.6. So let's pretend that this is a Canon M50, which is a crop sensor camera. And I put a 50 millimeter on the M50. This won't be 50 millimeters. It has to be multiplied by 1.6, which will equal to 80, around 80 millimeters. I know this it's like I'm good at math, right? But I actually just looked it up using the calculator. Anyway, <laughs> so what are the advantages of having a full frame sensor? So why wouldn't you just opt for a prop sensor camera? Those are lighter, right? But full frame cameras actually uh, have some benefits. First and foremost, the shallow depth of field. Because of the bigger sensor, whenever you use a uh, wide open lenses like 1.8 or 1.4, you will have that crispy, creamy background whenever you take portraits. And yeah, it's just gonna be great overall whenever it comes to rendering the background out of focus. And another advantage of having a full frame sensor is the low light capabilities. Because the sensor is bigger, you are allowing more light to go into the camera and therefore you will not suffer from noise that much, which impressively the 6D actually is a good low light performer considering the other Canon cameras that were produced around that time. But with this camera, I think you're good to go up to 6,400. According to my wife, she would use this camera up to 3,200 ISO in professional shoots, maybe up to 6,400, but you're gonna have to do some cleaning up in post when it regards to the noise. And the second advantage of this Canon 6D is that this is a DSLR, which means digital single lens reflex, which means this has a, a mirror inside. I, know, I don't know if you can see it, but there is a mirror right there which is unlike mirrorless cameras, which have no mirror, hence the name mirrorless. So the good thing about this, you have that DSLR feel. Like whenever you snap a photo, you get that bouncy shutter feel. Let me do that again. <laughs> it's oddly satisfying. So the third pro of the Canon 6D is just the body in general, the feel and the ergonomics of the body. So I've asked my wife last night and my friend Bal Choi and my friend Joshua Sunny Lam, I asked them all and asked them what they like about the Canon 60 and they both gave an average answer that the Canon 60's grip was actually the best grip that they've ever used. And I was like, whoa, I gotta try it out. So I pulled out my wife's uh, camera from the dry box and then I was like, wow, this actually feels very comfortable in the hand compared to holding my a7 IV. The a7 IV, um, the body or the grip right here, it sticks in a little bit more, which means I have to like be in this arthritis grip right here. I'm not that old yet, but I can feel it in my knuckles. But with the 6D, it like rests perfectly in the palm and my fingers just rest inside this little groove over here. So yeah, I agree with them. The ergonomics and the grip of the Canon 6D is really amazing. And the fourth pro of the Canon 6D is its current price tag. So since its release in 2012, the price of the Canon 6D has significantly dropped. So right now it retails on Amazon for $500, but I'm sure that you can, you, you can get a better price than that if you search online, like maybe a used one, probably you can get one half the price, or if you're lucky, you can even get something less than that but you just have to double check the shutter count and the the condition of the body so yeah the fourth strength of this is its current price which is already low and the fifth strength of the canon 6d is the lens selection in 2023 boys and girls everybody is switching to mirrorless which means the dslr market has gone down significantly and now is the best time to hop on the full frame bandwagon and get yourself a canon 6d because right now 
all the lenses that I know that used to be expensive are cheap now. I remember when I got my 60D, I would never even consider purchasing like an EF lens because they were just so darn expensive. But DSLR lenses in 2023 are much, much more affordable. So if you wanna pick up a kit like what my wife uses, so my wife uses a 24 to 70 as her main lens, a, a Tamron 70 to 200 for her telephoto lens. And the lens that is mounted right here is the Nifty 50. Uh, 50 millimeter f1.8. So all these three lenses are not expensive at all considering what they can do. Okay, so the seventh strength of the Canon 6D is that this can shoot 24 FPS or 25 FPS if you're shooting PAL. So I know this is a weird thing to talk about because a lot of people would probably be complaining that this does not have 60 FPS, but not me. I shoot more interviews and I shoot more documentary style uh, videos. So 24 FPS is something I always look for whenever I choose camera. So this thing can do just that. So let's pretend you are hired to not just do a photo shoot, but an interview shoot as well. So you can set this camera at 24 FPS and put the shutter at 50 and use whatever lens you have and adjust ISO according to whatever situation you're in and you are gonna be good to go because that leads me to point number eight, which is dealing with audio. This camera also has a microphone jack. So the, having a microphone jack is crucial because this allows you to plug in any microphone, let's pretend this microphone right here, onto your camera. So you, all you need to do is just slide in a microphone, uh, pop open the microphone door, plug it in, and now you have a camera with a microphone on top, which will allow you to capture better audio quality than the built-in microphone on this thing. So you have to remember that audio is 50% of the viewing experience equation. So do not neglect your audio. When you do buy the 60 and you plan to use it for video, remember to buy yourself a decent microphone to use it with like maybe a Rode Video Micro or maybe a cheaper one like a Boya BY-MM1. Okay guys, so sadly there is no such thing as a perfect camera and most certainly the Canon 60 is no exception to that. So the first obvious thing that the Canon 60 does not have is a flip screen. There is no flipping screen. Like, why? They release it for their cheaper cameras. Why did they not put it on the Canon 60? And this is what a flip screen looks like. We're used to seeing this, right? So if you're planning to vlog with this, good luck trying to see yourself using the screen. There is no flip screen. So if you're trying to go down low and take photos of maybe grass or something, you really have to put your face on the ground as well to look at the screen. Same goes as taking a very high angle photo. You have to make sure that you can see the screen. So maybe you have to grab a chair or something because there is no flip screen. So the second con of the Canon 6D is that it has no autofocus in video mode. So what do I mean by that? So whenever you're shooting with your smartphone, right? Maybe your Android phone or your iPhone, if you do take a video with it and you hit record and you move your face around the screen, you don't know that the phone is actually pulling focus for you. It's actually focusing on your face. It's putting a box on your face and you know that you're in focus. But it's not the case for this camera. You can only maybe half press the shutter while you are shooting video and it's gonna slowly rack focus until the subject becomes in focus. So sadly, this does not have the dual pixel autofocus that Canon is famous for. This is just a few years early from the inception of the dual pixel autofocus. So what I do is that with the 6D, you actually have a button here, like a focus magnifier. It's a question mark here. So once you do place this on a tripod and you have a subject in front of the, the camera, just press that magnifying glass and rack focus and then just lock it on manual focus. And you're sure that as long as you are in an aperture that is not like f2.8, that, that subject will be in focus about 90% of the time. So yeah, that's an easy workaround for the bad autofocus or the non-existent autofocus and video of the Canon 60. And the third con of the Canon 60 is that this has a recording limit of 30 minutes in video. So whenever you shoot a video, this will max out and stop recording at 30 minutes. So the fifth and final con in regards to the Canon 6D was graciously pointed out to me by my friends Ball Choi and Sunny, whom are both longtime 6D users, is the burst rate on the Canon 6D. So this camera can only do 4.5 shots per second. For somebody like me who does a lot of action shots, like for skateboarding, 4.5 frames may not be enough for some cases. Okay, so I just set it to high burst rate, so I'm gonna let you listen to the actuation of the shutter. 
So that was the Canon 60. So now we're gonna try the a7 IV. <laughs> Big difference, right? It makes the Canon 60 sad. I mean, of course this is an, an unfair comparison because this is a much newer camera, but then for something specific like shooting sports, this is definitely not gonna be your first bet or your first choice. Okay, that's pretty much everything I've got regarding the Canon 60. So those are the pros and the cons of the Canon 60. So I hope you found some insights, valuable insights regarding the Canon 60. So conclusion time. So who is this camera for? So I think this camera is for either a beginner who wants to do this professionally. This camera will already look good. I mean, not just what it can do, but if you do hold this and somebody's paying you to shoot, this doesn't look like a beginner camera anymore, especially if you compare it to something like this. If you show up to a shoot and somebody's paying you to shoot and you show up with this, people are gonna question you. <laughs> so your client is probably gonna be a little bit hesitant to pay you the amount that you asked for if you show up to shoot with this camera. But if you show up to a shoot with the Canon 60 and a lens like this, you are gonna get a few nods like this. Trust me, I know, because I was hired to do a wedding once and then I came to the wedding with a Canon M50 with a speed booster and like a Sigma 17 to 50 at that time. I was like shooting with these guys who had 5D Mark IVs with EF red ringed lenses and I was like feeling so small. I didn't even want to film. <laughs> but then, yeah, I got through that phase. I finally saved up to buy better gear. So who is the 60 not for? I would say 100% not for vloggers because first of all, you don't have a flip screen and you don't have autofocus, which are the two main things that I look for in a vlogging camera because those are the two things that will make your vlogging life so, so much easier. So this is recommended for photographers and videographers, definitely not for vloggers. Do not confuse the two. Videographer, vlogger are two different things. So with all that said, it begs the question, is the Canon 60 still worth it in 2023? And I would give it a big yes. It's definitely worth it. You are not gonna be disappointed if you do decide to buy this camera. So that's it for me guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, leave a like and leave a comment down below. And as always, I'll see you guys next time in the next video. Peace.